Okay, time for our next model. Uh, this is going to be the Aurora Forgotten Prisoner, and I'll talk about the title a little bit more in a minute. But uh, the Aurora Monster models were the models that you know I grew up with as a kid. As a matter of fact, my brother had this one over here. I had you know a few of the others, and uh, they're by far my favorites. They're hard, some are hard to get, but they've been repopped over the uh, the years over you know a number of times. Uh, it start, they started around 1962 where they developed the Frankenstein and they brought it to the uh, an industry show, the uh, Hobby Industry Association of America. And they thought they had a dud on their hands. Uh, it was well, not well received. And as the story goes, on the last day, uh, they allowed kids to attend the show and it was an immediate hit at that point. And uh, they started off with the Frankenstein. The following year, they made a Dracula and a Wolfman. Then they did the uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Mummy, the Phantom of the Opera, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, King Kong. Those were all 63. 64, they came out with Godzilla, a big favorite. Uh, then in 65, they came out with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the Bride of Frankenstein, and the first non-movie type... Uh, uh, subject was which was the witch and then uh, finally in 1966 the forgotten prisoner now uh, again this is not from any movie or anything like that but it was from an association with Warren magazine which made all the horror magazines uh, a whole bunch of them and uh, they had some sort of deal where they were gonna the magazine the horror magazine would popularize this kit and you know some of the others for sure and uh, what happened was they ended up eventually making a story uh, in 1970 in Creepy Number 34, which was, uh, you know, The Forgotten Prisoner. And it was a, a derivative of, of a Poe story called The Cask of Monte, Amontillado. Anyhow, it's a cool story. Basically, one guy imprisoned the other and then died himself over here. And this guy, because nobody knew even knew he was there, ends up forgotten and uh bag of bones after a few years so uh let's uh well again about the title you'll see here it says the forgotten prisoner of not castle but castell and uh m-a-r-e mare people call it castle mare but this looks definitely like an accent to me so if i've called this when i was a kid i called this the forgotten prisoner of castel mary Right, the the French uh, French version of it, and the the story itself in the magazine is Castle, you know, T L E, and Castle Mayor without the accent. So again, people call it Castle Mayor. I call it Castel Marais, and uh, you call it what you will. But let's see what's in the box over here. So uh, this was uh, one of the many repops, and it, it seems to be one of the most popular. Aurora model or at least that people can get their hands on these days because I see more people building this one than uh, any of the others uh, in the last few years so uh, let's see what's inside oh I think we got another notch here or something but no, it's well boxed okay here we go a simple kit or at least I keep on saying that and then it takes me forever to build. So everything in the bag, that's nice. Oh, well, although it was only taped. Let me get my blade on that one there. So there's the backing over here. A little smaller than I remember. I'm going to dump out all the parts here. There's the base, the skeleton, and uh, you know, a few things like snakes and rats and spiders and things like that. So, not too complicated. One small thing that I intend to change from the model is to uh, go between the grids from these uh, cell bars over here so that they're you know see through and maybe put something in back where it's lit up uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to light it but i don't like the fact that it's all solid over here 
Okay, that last video crapped out on me just as I was about to discuss some changes I wanted to make to the model. Uh, basically, I was never thrilled about this deep uh, gash in the rocks with the uh, cell bars behind it. Uh, I, I, the cells, the spacing for these uh, bars really doesn't conform to the uh, figure itself, the uh, dimensions. Uh, I think I can get away with something. I was gonna, I'm gonna take tear that all out, out and then put something where there's fewer bars going uh, vertically and horizontally and I think I'm just going to use this thicker wire kind of a pain because I don't want to really solder it I wish I had a, a, a spot welder but I'll figure a way to get that together and then make this not as deep and then I want to put an LED behind it uh, I think I can salvage something from this old soapbox over here to put behind it and then I'll have the backing at an angle with an LED on top so that it the LED light is spread from top to bottom with probably like a shimmering surface uh, metal foil crumpled metal foil or something like that uh, I think I can salvage the battery holder for these button batteries from this little uh, flash you know flashlight whatever and uh, I can use that I was also thinking that maybe if I was really brave I would also do it to this piece over here where I would gouge out the letters but I'm looking at it now it's really tiny and I'll lose some of the uh, the features of the font you know the, the the creepy look where it's kind of etched in stone so uh, I think I'm not going to do that although I thought about it for a while uh, I doubt it so, but definitely I'm going to do this. I did, I did start working on the model itself. Uh, there was a lot of seam lines on the body and the pants and the shirt, even with the, uh, you know, the teared look. So I've already done two passes with putty and sanding, and I think I may have to do one more. But with the putty and sanding, it's going to look fine. And uh, I've built, you know, the skull, same thing. There's some putting to do here, the skulls, the one on the floor and the one on the head. So li a little progress made. Okay, before I talk about any updates over here, uh, I've got to thank Jeff's Model Garage, a fellow YouTuber. A few days ago, what he did is he uh, gave a shout out to my channel over here. And since then, everything's been just bonkers. Emails were flooding in with people commenting, mostly on the, the Beatnik Bandit uh, video, of course. And uh, comments and subs, and it's just been nuts. So I've what was nice is I found a lot of other YouTube channels that I haven't been watching and I've subbed to those. Um, if I haven't gotten around to them, I will because there are just so many. <laughs> and uh, even better, I thought, was that there was a lot of people that had subbed to mine and commenting on mine were people whose YouTube channels I have been watching for a long time. And it's nice to see that they are now, you know, looking at my channel. So again, thanks uh, enormously, Jeff. It was much appreciated. Now, uh, on the update, as I said, I was going to hollow that out. I've got the piece over here. It actually could be reused some other time. Uh, it's not perfectly straight. These are the hard wires over here, uh, metal wiring. wiring, And uh, not wires, really, just metal bars. And uh, it's uneven on purpose to fit with the motif. And I wanted it to be, you know, quite a large um, uh, opening. And now that it's open, uh, I've built this case over here. I was going to use something else and it wasn't quite right. And I've got two options for this. Um, I want to add some LEDs. Here's some, you know, red and, let's see, I don't know if you can see that, red and yellow. So to, together they're orange, but what I really want to do is if I can build a circuitry, and I've already amassed some components, a few transistors and things like that, is to have them flashing in alternate sequence so when the red is on the yellow is on off and so on and so forth and have kind of a flickering effect and what i've done with this is built this where there's a false bottom over here at an angle so i've got two options here i could light it up from the top and maybe use some something reflective inside uh, just maybe foil or something like that or because this is also see-through and if i if the led's intensity is enough i maybe backlight it and then what I can do is just give some texture to this over here with uh, blobs of white glue that dry, clear, and see-through, but with a texture. 
So I'll have to experiment first with the back and if the back one works, then I'll do it that way. And if it doesn't, then, you know, plan B is go through the top and have the back lighting that way at an angle. So most of it reflects out. One thing also about having this um, opened up now, if you look at the kit, there's a, they had this snake over here, which was, I wasn't, wasn't too crazy about the first time. But now that the it's open, you can see instead of going to the back wall there that they had the snake now goes right through the uh the bars and uh i'll have to do some surgery on the snake because he had a flat you know they cut it off where the you know the back wall the original back wall of the model was so i'll probably have to add on to him with uh some sprue or something like that to uh make him just a little longer now that he has some room it'll also depend on exactly the positioning of the box itself so i think i've got some room back there but we'll see how that goes and uh that's it for now okay an update from the bench uh as you can see all the parts are primed uh i use a combination of white primer and black primer tried to do things where you know there were some bone try to keep a bit of the white and the black for the primer and uh things are looking nice so far this is the uh See what I did there? I did some white, and uh, again, I'm going to paint the white over it, but I want I didn't want it to have it too dark before, with the primer alone. Uh, one of the updates I have is also this base over here. You can see I also primed it. Cage looks nice, or the bars. Um, I added some sand at the bottom, and what this is just like some PVA glue. You put the sand on top, and then after you dilute the PVA glue, and you kind of dab it in there, and it really soaks, so this sand different grains like some bigger pieces some smaller it, it's not going anywhere it looks great really happy with that um a lot of work on the circuitry over here which i want to put behind that uh what you can see here is i've got uh some flashing leds whoop was it wasn't in there tight so i got basically a red and a yellow um i tried to do the texture over here as you can see and this is again a piece of uh, see-through acrylic which I dab PVA all droplets let it dry when again put more droplets let them dry so I had this really nice texture but I found that when I put these LEDs through the bottom over here no matter what it just looks like there's two flashing LEDs on the bottom there so uh, that's not gonna work I'll have to go through the top as I mentioned and use this foil in here and then have it over the top and because it's a slant you will be able to see some all the way through however uh doing a little test i can see that even this is not bright enough even those these are high intensity leds i don't know if i could add you know four leds instead of just the two i'll see what i can do worst comes to worst it's still going to look nice in a dark room but you really won't see that much when it's a well-lit area uh, I had a transistor circuit I was working on initially, initially. Um, that didn't work out too well, so I went to the trusty 555, and I have something here that I can, you know, control the flash. I'll have it all dismounted, um, either build it, the circuit on a Vero boy, board or one of these pre-made PCBs, and then fit it all in the back. This uh, battery holder is too big, but I have long, longer ones elongated so hopefully i can fit everything behind that huge base and uh if i'm brave enough what i might do is even try to have like an old style lever through the wall you know like a wooden lever or a metal one um you know with a framing around it as if somebody can you know turn it off and on that way i may have to do it on the side though because if the skeleton's here i i really won't have that much room to play with it looks kind of odd up here so i might just put it on the side here or the side here and uh if not worse comes to worse it'll just be a plain switch in the back so things are moving it along i think the painting is going to go fairly quick if anything this circuit took me a lot longer than it i expected because i was playing around with different circuits and again still a little fiddling around to do with this but uh, looking good so far okay uh we have now a uh, built circuit board uh and i made a small modification to the um circuit and i now have four leds so hopefully it'll be a little bit brighter or bright enough to uh, light up this little area here it's all glued you know glued in now solid 
Uh, I was thinking after I placed it, I said maybe I should have given a clear yellow background instead of just, you know, metallic foil so that when it's off you see yellow, not that. Uh, I think I can still do it through the uh, bars. Uh, I'll see if I can... I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Uh, one thing about this is you can't see here on the camera uh, what I've done, but I, there is, um, you know, some dry brushing and I see some really nice textures over here, but there's not enough contrast. So even, you know, you see it really when you're up close, but, you know, any distance and that detail is all lost. So I think I'm going to have to go in and really do this um, dry brushing again with gray all over the place and then get you know get the accents back by doing uh, some black afterwards or some other dark color so um, that's uh, what's happening with the base you can see I've done a lot of painting uh, given this you know white and then a uh, lot of washes with browns and uh, you know burnt umber and things like that to get you know an old texture on the the bones i kind of like it it's a little darker than i wanted but uh again it's an old skeleton so why not i'm gonna have a few other colors in there some green like mossy type things but that's gonna just be little dabs here and there so not too bad uh one yet gray rat one brown rat still needs some work one thing i did not do which i tried to do afterwards on the snake you can see it's now elongated is to get more detail from the fangs. Uh, I noticed I should have, you know, um, cut that out or, you know, trimmed that before I painted, but I was able to do a little bit. So it's not finished. A little more work here uh, needs to be done for sure. Um, the one issue I had with the paint, you can see this is blue and I had some, you know, reds going for the sash and Try to put a little more darker on the bones, the sepia tones, and have a black wash on the white shirt. It doesn't really show yet, but I think it needs a little more work. The biggest problem I had was this is supposed to be green, and it's actually been painted green. I used this high viscosity uh, Pebeo paints, which I've never had an issue with before. And where it was, you know, white on the sides because I had that overspray with the white primer, you can see the green, but everywhere else, it just turned like you can barely barely see the green it just became translucent and this is a thick you know high viscosity paint so I don't know what's happening there I don't know what I'm gonna do do I paint it with some other paints I can go with a Tamiya that I'd have to you know mask out everything and airbrush that I have a similar dark green uh, uh, for airbrushing uh, I might have to do that Either that or if I go with craft paint, which I would try to do is stick with craft paint because this is an old model and it's supposed to be, you know, look rustic and not perfect. Anyhow, maybe I'll go with another color. Unfortunately, I don't have this green in the craft paint. So uh, we'll see if I, what happens there. So that's it for now. A lot of progress. Still a little bit to go. Uh, the next thing I have to work on is, you know, whether I work on that fancy switch I was talking about for this. If I can rip, whip, whip up something quickly... I'm hoping that, you know, with the skeleton around here, maybe I could put that switch over here. I don't really want it on the side. I'm hoping I have a little room here. And it's hard to say because it's still not built to see how, how far he goes. I've, I've looked at references and I'll try to get, you know, the top measure and then see if I have a spot for that there. And hopefully make it a lever, maybe even spring loaded so that, you know, you hit it down and these things go on and let go and it goes off. So making progress. Bring the end over here, and uh, I just want to point out a few things. Uh, as you can see, uh, I have the uh, circuit board mounted, the LEDs all hooked up. The only thing I need to do is add a switch. Now, uh, I had planned to have, you know, a fancy lever, uh, but as you can see with the figure, there really is no room. There's just a little corner over here. I built this switch over here with, you know, like a fancy lever that would look like um, some wall lever for the lights over here but uh, I I'm thinking now if I put it this way it's just too awkward I may just end up putting a regular switch I still still to be decided but I'll, I'll have to see if I can find something either really really small or just go with a regular switch as you can see I did repaint uh, basically did a dry brushing of the back wall over here I managed to get the uh, clear yellow onto the foil so that it doesn't look like 
a metal foil when it's when the lights are not on uh, and uh, I did resolve my painting issue over here I basically ended up uh, airbrushing the the coat again the you know I had to uh, mask it all up but it wasn't all that bad to be honest uh, in the end and I started building the figure here you'll see he'll be quite tall once he's in place and he basically takes up all that room uh, other than that, I, I just want to mention one other thing that I'm probably going to try. And what this is, is uh, adding rust to some parts of the metal and the uh, clasps over here. And this is a DIY rust. And what it is, is steel wool. Uh, just plain old steel wool without any soap or anything. Sometimes they have embedded soap in there. Plain dry steel wool that you mix with vinegar. And over a period of time... It makes this gooey substance that uh, becomes rust that you can apply just like paint. So this has been sitting there for about uh, a little over a week. It's not quite done, but there's enough on the bottom there. I think I could end up using it for that. So keep that in mind uh, as something to try. Just make sure you have a completely airtight container. The last batch I had just dried out. So a uh, few more things. Like I said, we're nearing the end. Okay, another quick update over here. Uh, it is now fully wired up with a switch. I don't have a lever. I end up, ended up going with a really simple switch. Push on, push off over here. And it's on the top. I just bored out the square for it. And it's just, uh, you know, hot glued onto a plate and then uh, spaced out accordingly. Uh, I will add some uh, little harnesses over here for the wire so it's not as loose but uh, that's going to be it for the electric electrical part uh, the electronics and i didn't mention it before but i will show and describe a bit in more detail the circuit at the end of the video i started putting on a few of the bits and pieces over here and built up the uh, figure itself and uh, you can see i added a bit of um well translucent green uh, tamiya over here to simulate you know the moss settling in but i'm gonna add some real moss bits and pieces over here i might have to color that a little more and uh, i took a hemp rope just broke off a piece and then separated all the strings and that's gonna kind of be like hay on the bottom over here and uh, i took you know the the green mossy effect i put it on little dabs on the uh Places on the skeleton itself, uh, I'm going to have to go back and do a little more touch up there. But just so you get the feeling that the moss is kind of everywhere. Uh, I'll probably, I'll see if I can get it onto the walls themselves. Although it's a little tricky because, you know, the uh, proportions and things like that. But definitely over here on the bottom against the wall and a few tufts here and there. So, uh, and then the figure is pretty much done. I already did the mat on the uh the uh, metal parts and things like that so there should be very little touch up once it's all in place and uh here is the final model uh very happy how it came out uh again you you heard all the issues i had with it there weren't really that many other than the ones i had myself and trying to add all these little extras to the model which i tend to do a lot uh the only issue i had when putting it together was this little clasp over here uh is supposed to have that hand in there but uh what happens is that hand is either off to the side of the model which i did not like or it ends up being right over that mouse's head so if you're going to build this model what i really recommend is you take that mouse and you move him up here up front which makes him actually looking at the figure which is even better so uh very happy with it what i'm going to do is uh show you some um you know in the light and in the dark if you give me a second here ways and it looks really really cool so it looks better as all these other models they look better when you're you know when you're up close and have it in front of you but uh very nice model uh again something unique something different and it looks pretty cool so very happy with it and uh hope you enjoyed it and i'll be building another one soon
Okay, I said I was going to talk about the uh, circuit, which is uh, shown here. Uh, I will provide a components list in the comments for everything I have, but I want to explain it a bit because you may want to tweak it. So basically what this is, is an oscillator, or to be specific, this is what's called an A-stable multivibrator. And uh, what it is, it basically generates pulses from the 555 output. Now normally that would be generate pulses that go high, which would drive, in our cases over here, LEDs like 3 and 4. Uh, but because the 5.5 can either uh, source or sync current, when it goes low, uh, what it does is it turns on the first two LEDs, LEDs 1 and 2. Now the frequency is, you can calculate it from a formula, it's based on uh, VR1, which is variable resistor 1, basically called a potentiometer, uh, and the other R2 and uh, the capacitor C1. Now you can play around with those components and if you go online you'll find lots of resources that you know give you the specific uh, calculations you can make from that but those are not as critical uh, that you know you, you you have to worry too much about them. You can use different values and you'll you'll see what the results are as you play around with them. The important components in the circuit is R, are actually the two resistors R3 and R4 which are 470 ohms and those have to be calculated based on the maximum current that you can pass through your LEDs. In my case it was around 30 milliamps and I did the you know ohms law with where you take off the voltage of the in our case two LEDs at a time and then apply the maximum current that you want to see what that resistor value is. Go online and you'll find a bunch of resources and you, be, you should be able to work your way through and uh, come up with your own design that's uh, suitable to your needs.